Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night wherever you are around the world. Welcome to the final of Pro Tour Return to Ravnica 2012. Rich Hagen, Brian David Marshall with you here in the booth. It is Stanislav Sivka on the left, Yuya Watanabe on the right. The final begins with a hallowed fountain and a chromatic star from the Czech star, Stanislav Sivka. BDM, tell us about the final matchup this weekend. Stanislav Sivko went 15 and 1 in the Swiss rounds, playing Second Breakfast. It's a deck built around Second Sunrise, Pyrite uh -huh. Spellbomb, Three. Conjurer's Bobble. He's just looking to set up an infinite loop with Lotus Blooms, get enough mana, and just cycle through his deck over and over and over again, doing two damage at a time with a single Pyrite Spellbomb. Uh, Yuyu Watanabe is playing the same deck he used in Seattle what not a month ago yep. at the players championship jun uh you know slightly uh, modified and updated with some return to ravnica cards there's an abrupt decay or two like running around in there there are some death right shamans which we see right there on turn one so he's gonna be able to make a three drop on turn two he used a fetch land so that is the matchup uh it does seem to be favorable towards sifka uh, that's certainly what the Swiss has told us. That's certainly what looking at the potential sideboards. Four games out of five will use sideboards potentially. Uh, and I can tell you that Sivka already has his kill mechanism in hand. That's his one copy of Pyrite Spell on. He's got a Kundra's Bauble, a Reshape, and a second Sunrise. Is he considering going off here on turn two? That would be a statement and a half, wouldn't it, to start a final? No, I don't think he is. I mean, why would you do that? Sure. Kundra's Bauble. Pass the turf. There's no rush. Yep. No, he doesn't get to go up a land. You know, the Death Rate Shaman can eat his land as well. Mm-hmm. Fourteen. Fourteen. Mm -hmm. like, I can go to three. <laughs> Crack all my fetch lands. Wow, well, sure. Sir. He's got a dark confident uh, there in his hand. Might well see some action. Kitchen Finks, lightning bolt there. Mm -hmm. And it's Kitchen okay. Fix. 16. Okay, says so Sivka. So, what an obby bounces back up a couple of life points. Upkeep. Sacrifice. On upkeep. Okay. Thinning his deck. Mm -hmm. It's one of the things we've seen. <laughs> <laughs> Thinning his deck with Serum Visions. Oh, yeah, that doesn't quite work, does it? Uh, something we've seen him do is before he draws, using those uh, abilities uh, quite often just mm -hmm. to increase whatever tiny percent percentage increase he can get out of hitting a second sunrise or a faith's reward. Well, the thing is, I mean, the yeah. difference is, uh, we can say obviously it is marginal, but the margins add up. He is going to try to go off here. Draw a card. Zero. <coughs> so he draws a card when the chromatic star goes to the graveyard. X is zero in the reshape, which gets him a lotus bloom. That you sort of cheated it to play. Mm -hmm. Madam. 
And the reshape will go back into the library. He now has three white. Got three white. Second sunrise coming up. Okay. There it is. Lotus Bloom, Kundra's Bauble, Chromatic Star. Reappears. Sifka with Pirate's Bubble, Faith's Reward. Looks like a silence in hand as well. And sends to the bottom. Uh, he draws into reshape. 16. So go to 16. Crack away. And just for future reference, when Sifka asks if he's played a land this turn, he hasn't. Okay. Right? So the, the additional cost isn't terribly, uh, terribly much of a drawback for Sifka. And the mana keeps on coming. Zero. Here comes uh, zero. Yep. reshape at zero. So he goes in search of a second Lotus Bloom. There it is. So that does not suspend. This is turn three. Mm hmm. On the play, which he get he has gotten to be on throughout the uh, top eight. Yep, and that's by virtue of his Swiss rounds performance. Yeah. It's as straightforward as whoever's the highest seed gets that choice. As dominating a performance as we've seen, you know, with the possible exception of obviously exception of Luis Scott Vargas mm -hmm. uh, okay. and Conley Woods at uh, Worlds. Slight of hand now from Sifka. Gets him an ever. Uh, Elsewhere flask? Elsewhere flask. Free white. Okay. Master. <laughs> oh, master, says Watanabe. Face <laughs> reward. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So now you've got double Lotus Bloom, the Conjurer's Bauble, and Chromatic Star. Sifka still with four cards in hand. Elsewhere flask, silence. Pyrite, spell bomb, <laughs> and say an not? island. He's, yeah, he said I just not laid a land, right? right. So he's just confirming that and he's that, not. And that is correct. Yeah. Both of the lands that have come into play this turn have come into play off of his two uh, second sunrise and his faith's reward. Mm -hmm. That seems to be the one thing um. that he genuinely has just a teeny question mark over in his own mind about, you know, keeping track of all the moving parts of this. Yeah. Elsewhere, Flask, Pirate, Spellbomb, a couple of land in hand as well. Fetch up. Yeah, I guess he would prefer to not play a land until he could find a Ghost Quarter. Right, because that's when things start getting very good in terms of thinning out the yes. library. Yes. That doesn't go on indefinitely, of course, because as we saw in one of the earlier games today, uh, the Ghost Court has eventually run out of things for him to thin. But that's uh, great. But <laughs> but then yeah, yeah, I mean, that's true. Then the thinning is done. Yep. As lean and mean as it can be. Free blue. Yep. So much sighing in this top eight. Maybe we can just hear it better. <laughs> Maybe they're always sighing every show. I don't know. There we go. Elsewhere Flask. Sure. Draw. He's drawn a reshape. So I'll just go thin a third Lotus Bloom out. Going to Come reshape. On. Fetch. Draw, fetch. <coughs> Lotus Bloom. Which is obviously an homage to Black Lotus. Yes. Lotus Bloom, of course, very prominent already won Pro Tours as part of Dragonstorm. Yes. In fact, successive World Championships, if I'm not mistaken. Maki Mahara with Dragonstorm 2006. Um, and then and Patrick then, well, Chapin's Gassy Noldak. That's right. That was very much involved in that top eight. 
2007 in New York. But here at Pro Tour Return to Ravnica 2012, <coughs> remember you can play this format this weekend online <coughs> right now, Magic Online. You can. So, so surprisingly, or not surprisingly, depending on your event, Sifka said this deck's a lot easier to play on Magic Online. Oh, he, is it? Okay. Oh, it keeps track of your mana. Right. You, and in fact, he did say to me, he's like, it lets you know if you've played a land or not. <laughs> you know. And uh, you just fiddling with Sifka's mana there. <laughs> Rearranging <Blue>. it. <laughs> Leave my mana alone. <laughs> there's, there's the three blue. I'll deal with it for you, says one Well, he me, wants to do something. He wants this to be yeah. an interactive matchup. Sure. Gives him something to do. As we see. One. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, draw a card. Chromatic sphere. And you know what? There is a look on Sifka's face that we don't often see. He is running out. His hand is not, not exciting. Does he not have the no, he, no, he's got si oh. he's got a silence and a chromatic uh, sphere in in hand. He's going to lay that, and he's going to pass the turn. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, my. How many cards? Three. Three, <laughs> Three cards. I want to know if can be certain that none of them are the key ingredients. He just uh, kept, <laughs> kept drawing into nothing. Amazing. You hear? Master. <laughs> <laughs> Sister throws the master right back at him. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one mana. So, Deathrite Shaman away at land. I'll have okay. some mana. I'll have my friend Bloodbraid Elf. I will cascade into Dark Confidence. Nine. I'll hit you for six, put you to nine. I can't. Go. <laughs> and now he's back to Stanislav Sivka. Okay. It hardly seems fair that what <laughs> yeah. an enough of his turn was that short. But uh, uh, Sivka draws. He has drawn a Serum Visions to go with two land and a silence. Watanabe doing all he can to put the pressure on. A little bit of a smile on Watanabe's face. He's, sure. He's, he did not. He did not think he was going to. He's playing in bonus turns right now. Right. Absolutely. He did not think he would have any more turns this game. <laughs> so Eight. there is a land. So. When asked, yes, you have this time. Yes. You have played a land. Yeah, we've, we've not, in the games I've watched with Sifka, I've not watched him stumble mm -hmm. and then pick himself up and I haven't watched him stumble, actually. Or, yeah. Much less pick himself up and have to win a, on, on the subsequent turn. Yeah, so can he? That's the question. He's going to obviously try with Serum Visions. Right. And he's drawn Faith's Reward off the Serum Visions. He's considering what to do with the two cards from the Visions now off the Scry portion of the card. Well, there's another Serum Visions there. Hmm. Sifka keeps looking at those two oh, cards. Oh, one of them a reshape? I can't quite see. What does Sifka do now? Look at it. He is going to draw a card. It is reshape. Yep. yep. You're spot on. One. Is he going to get a Conjurer's Bobble? Okay. There it is. Okay. So at eight life, so he's dead if Wadanabi gets another right. crack at this. So there, there isn't really a case of, you know, am I being bold? This is what you have to do. 
So now he has to sift cards from Graveyard B into Deck A with the Conjurer's Bobble that he might want to get. So okay, having a look and... I don't know how this is going to pan out. Normally he knows exactly how things are going to pan out. Yeah, he seems a little, a little uh, frustrated this time. Okay, so, reshape back on the bottom, draw, he's drawn an elsewhere flask. Three white. Three white. <laughs> and one sure. faith reward. Four artifacts Trigger come back. Stack. Trigger on the stack. Or he draws from the elsewhere flask. Fitch. Seven. Seven. Sifka only has one more island in his deck. There's only seven. He has one planes. We've reached the end of the filtering. Right. And that is a serum visions he's drawn. Blue. See. And now a sleight of hand. Six cards are now in Sifka's hand. Blue or white. <laughs> 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 what a knob of being super helpful. But but interestingly, we, we talked about the fact that Sifka is a, a chess player and very yes. deliberate. And, and most, for the most part, everyone we've seen has laid down, you know, kind of laid down across their chair uh -huh. and waited for Sifka to finish them off. Sure. Yuya is, you know, interjected a little bit here. He's, oh, no, no, I, I've got your mana. I'll do it for you. I want like, and maybe throwing him off his rhythm a little You're bit. Right. And certainly body language, he's thoroughly engaged. Four mana. There you go, just let you know, you've got four mana. Thinking... Three white, yeah. Two. Thinking three white, so there's one blue left floating around as Second Sunrise brings about one land. This is on a stick. And four artifacts. Once again, we see some stack action. We're a turn away from somebody scooping them up here in game one. How long that turn will be, we don't know. Chromatic Star goes into hand for Sifka now. Six cards total to work with. Cast Serum Visions. It's crying. It's a draw. And it's crying. Did he draw from his... Did he forget his whole elsewhere flask? Sequence. Uh. Oh, okay, he drew without response. Right, time. okay. Island. Okay. Oh, interesting. He turns his fetch land into Two an more. island. Right. So that means he can have another little look see. Same. Okay. That sleight of hand gone into hand. Andrus Bauble sends Second Sunrise back into the deck. There's a Faith Reward in hand, Chromatic Star, two Slide of Hand, an Elsewhere Flask, and Chromatic Sphere, a Silence, and a Land. Three white. Take it. He 
guess he's looking to the pre shade at this point. Okay. Back there. drawn Ghost Quarter this time. Oh, we've established that a land has been played. I remember saying that, yeah. yeah. That was this turn. Yep. Three white. Three white. Two white, one blue. That's a land. What an I'll be really looking interested. It's game. It's game and what an I gets there. Whoa! One zero to the player of the year. <laughs> He's giggling! I've never seen you, you what an Abby giggle. Oh dearie me. One nil. To the player of the year. <laughs> Lucky man. <laughs> wow. So nice stuff with you. <laughs> you can play magic at a store near you every Friday. Earn Planeswalker points and battle against your friends in Friday Night Magic. October's FNM promo card is Evolving Wilds. Visit wizards.com forward slash FNM to find a store near you. That, well, it's 1-0. Let's see what uh, Sifa can do from there. And there is Second Sunrise. We go, Bidium, to the uh, rare instant from Mirrodin. Uh, as it says, they, the permits that died this turn uh, right. to the battlefield. Uh, interestingly, it's for each player. So we saw sort of a situation where uh, Sefka was playing around, giving his opponent more mana until he could silence him mm -hmm. because he had fetch lands and he could sack and keep getting do, doing the same thing with expanding his mana each turn and maybe get it to a point where he could counter something. Uh, it lends itself to artifact-based combo decks that have yet to achieve big results. And Ooh, well, someone's throwing down the gauntlet. Yeah, and no, but I mean, that's true because it was one of those decks that whenever someone... It was the kind of deck that people took you into the corner to show you at the start of day one, and by round five, you couldn't find them anymore. Sure. Because it had malfunctioned. They, they were one and three. Um, you know, I think of... There um, was some success at Worlds in Paris... Some with the I mean, deck, it, Paolo, it, um, P Pedro Canali. Pedro Canali had uh, played it. That's right. Pierre Canali uh, was an advocate of that. Jacob Van Lunen. Jake Van Lunen. Gabe Carlton Barnes. Yeah, Gabe Carlton Barnes and it. Steve Saden, I think, all played that deck. That's right. Um, so uh, we move on to Faith's Reward. So this is, if you like, the other side of the, the second Sunrise well, uh, I coin. Mean, I think this is what made push the deck over the top. It's, uh, I mean, I'm not even thinking. It obviously is. It, it does the same thing. Uh, costs a little more. It's only your permanence, mm -hmm. but it gives you this critical mass. I mean, you saw how hard it was for Sifka to go through his deck and find enough of those when he has eight copies in his deck. Yeah. So imagine when, you know, what would happen when you played the deck in the old days was you only had four second sunrises to, to work with. Sure. Let's see what else that helps Sifka's deck tick. We have Lotus Blue, one of my favorite cards of all time. Callback to the Fable Black Lotus. But you can only cast it via Suspend. And I say cast with emphasis deliberately because we're well aware Sifka isn't casting it. Right, That's he's why just it putting it into play. Which is why it does not suspend. So Because uh, it's rather than play this from your hand, you can pay naught and remove it from the game with three time counters on it. That does happen sometimes. It happens for Sifka right at the start of the game. We've seen him uh, suspend Lotus Blooms early. And uh, we now see, now this is a thing. This takes us to sideboard land. Uh, and yeah, we'll take a look. If you if you look at, through... Uh, Leyline of Sanctity. The Jun deck. You know, you see uh, sideboard cards like Slaughter Games, mm -hmm. you know, which target the player. You see sideboard cards like Jun Charm, which target the player. You see main deck cards like Thoughtseize. Um, you know, it's, it's just this just shuts all that off. Yep. And it costs four. Even though you get to put it in play at the beginning of the turn. Yep. It still has that converted mana cost four, which means it cannot be abrupt decayed. That's right. And I don't I just don't believe there's any way 
that you use that can interact with it at all. So we know it's going to be coming in, and if we see it, it's going to be big problems. I mean, he can, not be, but he can attack. Yeah, <laughs> u using the old red zone, uh, which isn't something that Graph Digger's Cage is particularly excited about. Uh, creature cards can't enter the battlefield from graveyards or libraries. Players can't cast cards in graveyards or libraries. So the all-purpose hoser, uh, we say, shuts down attempts to utilize graveyards and libraries. Half the top eight. Uh, had it in sideboards, uh, Proto Avacyn restored. And uh, specifically, and I didn't know that, specifically to combat Birthing Pod. Yeah, I, I have all sorts of expletives for this card. Oh, you're not a fan? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not even, I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna, I'm gonna turn away okay. while you finish this segment because I hate this card. Oh, oh. Oh. Okay, it's gone. It's not on the screen anymore. Right, oh, excellent. I, excellent. Just, I thought they were going to just leave it there. <laughs> then, they, <laughs> then they actually took it away. Oh. So there we are. Uh, just a few of the cards uh, from Sifka's deck and sideboard uh, uh, with some interesting little anecdotes there for you. We'll have to take a look at uh, some of the uh, Watanabe cards uh, in a little while. Uh, but as you can see, Sifka, Watanabe, the final. Watanabe leads 1-0. to zero. Um, Sifka will presumably know to a pretty good degree how often things like that happen to him. Not just at this tournament, but in all the times he's play tested. So he must understand, yeah, I've just lost to a 3% chance, an 8% chance, or a 20% chance, whatever it is. Sure. Well, when we, we talked to him, he, he went off on turn two mm -hmm. against... Uh, one of the players, I'm, who someone who finished in the top sixteen, and was was like, "Oh, I had him," but then he he, oh, oh. he got me on turn two. It was, was Shakarazaz. Shakarazaz, yes, it? yes, uh, it was David Shakarazaz. who said, uh, "I was so close to beating him, <laughs> except he beat me on turn two. And then I I talked to uh, Sifka about this. I was like, mm -hmm. "Oh, you know, how you know how you know? Can you win before?" He's like, "Oh, I won on turn two. It happens one in a hundred games." So he definitely yeah knows knows the odds. So therefore, when you know the odds, knowledge is power, you do kind of go, sure, I lost that one, that's a shame, but it happens this amount of the time, let's move on. And he's still a favorite, one would think. Now. So I see a ley line. Okay. And I see Serum Visions inside of him, but I don't see, oh, and a Lotus Bloom. Right, and three land, three land, slight Serum, Bloom, and ley line. That's Sifka's hand. He's on the play. Oh, so, and Sifka kept that. Yeah. So what a Nabi says, no thank you. Uh, he will go to six. So, and you know, in case you're wondering if Watanabe was going to like take out his Inquisition to Kozilek or anything like that, he didn't. There, you know, we saw we saw that in there. You know, he still has. You know, he's like, well, he can't draw that those cards. Every game. Mm -hmm. now, I gotta tell you, I wanna play in the Players' Championship just so I can get those cool sweatshirts like the one you use wearing. Oh, the uh, the personalized <laughs> I am yeah. you, your Watanabe yeah. Magic the Gathering. Uh, it's hoodie. exactly what I want a you, your Watanabe sweatshirt. Well, I tell you what, Stanislav Sifka might be getting one of those next yeah, well, year. That's true, if he uh, wins. Because he's 24, uh, platinum pro, um, in his first sort of big year at the pro uh, level. This is his first pro to top eight. But, you know, 15th and 18th, that's those two performances. So, although it says top 32 of Worlds, he was only just outside the top 16 I mean, there. Still, to see over the course of three events, you know, this, 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 like sort of inexorably marching forward <laughs> yeah. in the standings. And there's Yuya. Now, he really has a great picture door. of him. Yeah, it, it, indeed it is. 16 GP top eight, six Grand Prix titles. Um, and of course, he's still looking for a Pro Tour title himself. One of these two will be first time Pro Tour winners. Um, double player of the year 2009 and, of course, 2012. And, and, and he's also. A former rookie of the year. That's what, you see. I always forget that he's a former rookie of the year. What year, what year was that? Was it, uh, that? Wasn't um, it? Was it two thousand five? Wasn't that the full sweep? Oh uh, yeah, because when Kenji Samura beat Olivier Ruel by one point. Yep, he's rookie. Uh, okay. Kenji's player of the year. Masashi Oiso wins World Team Championships. Sure. Okay. And uh, Mori wins uh, the w world wins title. Worlds um, in Japan. In Japan, in Yokohama. That's right. All right, so we got a four-card hand here. That's not very good <laughs> news. So, 
Yeah, there are no lands in four. Find an ancient grudge. Um. Keep. Apparently, uh, Pierre Canali was rookie of the year in 2005. Oh, it was sorry, 2006. 2007. No, 2007. Oh. oh, okay. Oh, you're right. You're right. I can picture him holding the trophy right now. So it wasn't a total sweep. Felt like it. Yeah, it really did. So there's the ley line of sanctity. Yu Yu draws a swamp, but actually has now mulliganed another couple of cards here. Elsewhere, Flask. There is mm -hmm. his face Good. reward. There you see the ley line of sanctity. If it's in your opening hand, you can begin the game with it on the battlefield, and you can't be the target of spells or abilities your opponents control. Okay. Sicker makes a second star. Yep. Mm -hmm. And next turn, yes. we will begin. 18. Dark Confident piles in. The first of a ten turn clock currently. Death Right Shaman. And Sifka. Yeah, rotates round. Goes to 17. Remember, Watanabe has three titles this year Grand Prix Kuala Lumpur, Grand Prix Manila, the Players' Championship in Seattle. He's only missed out twice in 12 events this year. Wow. He's had a, a significant finish in 10 of his 12 events. So he's not actually eligible for Hall of Fame until 2017 then. That's right, because his Pro Tour debut was Yokohama 2007, where he finished 139. Been playing Grand Prix since Nagoya 2004. It's crying. Yep. Serum Visions leads to scrying. And there is a sleight of hand and a chromatic sphere waiting, courtesy of scry. Four cards in hand uh, for Sifka. Two of which are Faith's Reward, one of which is a sleight of hand, and one of which is the land as he now draws the chromatic sphere. Down it comes. Blue draw. That's a second sunrise he's drawn, so he now has second sunrise and double Faith's Reward. He is in the 2016 class because it's the 10th oh, sure, year, sure. so 2007 <coughs> takes you in. For terrific Hall of Famers <laughs> <invested> <laughs> this year. Paolo Vita, Dama de Rosa. One both. Yes, <laughs> Sashio Hito, <laughs> Kenji Samura, Big and Patrick Chapin. Yeah. Reshape. Yeah. Yeah. Doing the mana worked for Watanabe last game. Obviously planning on that again here. Maybe we could do it like uh, the the big magic games, and we could have you know people who are eliminated <laughs> from the top eight stand to represent blue mana, and some of them will represent like white my, mana. My deck and and as he spends them, they can go sit down and, <laughs> and really, really uh, yeah. add some spectacle to this. One blue left. Yeah. So he's just playing uh, with his hand face up over there. <laughs> He's just like, oh, let's see if I get it. And you'll know. If you're enjoying live magic coverage here on magicthegathering.com, plenty more as the year winds down. We've got three European Grand Prix at uh, Leon Bochum and Lisbon, amongst others. We'll see how uh, that pans out. Not sure what's going to happen with that next year, but certainly for those three events we're going to be bringing you live video coverage. Looking forward to that.
right here, right now, in the final. Sifka, surprisingly one down. Yeah, I don't think that'll... I think he's going to even this out here. Right. It's all face-up magic. Kitchen table magic. <laughs> hey, look, let's just watch what's going on together. You look after the mana, I'll draw the cards. Bottom, there's his ghost quarter. Did I put on? I don't think you did, but I don't remember. Ghost quarter. Kevin Land. Kevin Land. <coughs> this. <laughs> what an I'll be rolling the dice now in his. Uh, and something to do while he waits to shuffle. But things Sorry. are looking awfully good for Sifka here in game two. Islands. Yep. Looking to even it up at one apiece in the final. Three white. Three white. And sacrifice. Draws into another Faith's reward. Uh, I can show you. Uh, please, please, please. Yeah, I can show you. Okay. Uh, resolved? Uh, yeah. It looks like <laughs> Watanabe's kind of just it's depending whether he's going to concede here or. Sure. It's, it's legal? Like. Yeah, you can watch it if you want. Watch. Yeah. Watch, yeah. You conceded? Yeah, I conceded. There we go. Yes, I'm actually conceding and uh, so. Oh, he shows him a grape shot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe I will change. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Interesting stuff. No dance, one dance, no dance, no dance. Like. <laughs> so, it, and the, the reason for changing from spell, uh, spell Bomb to Grape Shot is because he knows that there are slaughter games in Yu Yu Watanabe's sideboard. He does not want. Uh, he does, he's had that happen before where he knows his opponent has access to slaughter games. He will side into the grape shot. His opponent might resolve a slot. Of course, they resolve the slaughter games, mm. but actually gets to you know, mana to cast it before they're dead. And they name pyrite spell bomb, and he's like, Maha. Yeah. gotcha. <laughs> yes. So there you see Treetop Village. That is uh, part of Yu Watanabe's um, land suite. Most powerful of the original Urza's Legacy man land cycle. There were plenty of good ones. Yeah, there's a, I mean, amazing article years ago written by John Becker called The Little Village That Could. That's all about, it's like his ode to treetop village. Uh -huh. So, uh, yeah, no, that, and we, we've seen that just represent, you know, unexpected damage and, you know, really great at hitting planeswalkers when you need to hit them and, so if what Anabi could win this, I mean he'd be in very good company using Treetop Village. You look at Gary, Gindy, Kibler. That's a that's a pretty good collection of three Pro Tour winners yeah. right there. So um and it would be the that's, first non American Houston, on that. Houston, list. Hollywood and uh, Austin. No, Austin, two thousand nine. Oh Austin, sorry. Yeah. Honolulu came later. Yeah. Uh Deathright Shaman again. We keep coming back to this guy, and he keeps making himself look very good on camera. I mean, like, I think he's pretty good with any two of those three abilities as a 1-1. One -one. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, all three abilities, and he's a 1-2. You know, just that much more difficult to kill. You know, a tiny bit more, you know, stubborn to deal with. And has just three amazing abilities that you want to use in the middle and late uh, late game of uh, early, middle, and late game in a, in, a, in a game of Magic. Yeah, and very interesting that it, the access to black specifically because of the hybrid mana, um, you think of green as obviously the, the color of birds and the color of Lanoir Elves. Right. Um, but here, it's a, a straight up black Lanoir Elf, if you will. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm expect, I expect that you'll see it in some, in some zombie decks. Hmm. Well, I guess you can go, uh, yeah, well, it's not. You can't. You're going to struggle to go turn two maybe, Jirau specs. Maybe, right, maybe, moder maybe modern zombies. Yeah, that's the thing, isn't yeah. it? And uh, there you see one of the most iconic cards ever, Tarmogoyf, the future site uh, rare. 
can get as big as an 8 and 9. Now, in general, when people are playing these in good quality Pro Tour formats, it tends to be 4, 5, 5, 6. That's about the mid-range uh, on a Tarmogoyf, but it gets up there very, very quickly. Um, yeah, and, uh, you know, we saw we saw you know great new artwork for it. Uh, it's going to be in Modern Masters. That's right. That's uh, one of the 229 cards uh, in Modern Masters coming out. To, which, and you, you, so you might be able to go to Las Vegas mm -hmm. and draft a Tarmogoyf. You could live the dream and get past a Tarmogoyf. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you might get a foil one. Stop. Yeah, because there's a foil in every pack. Dark Confident, Ravnica City of Guilds, the original Ravnica. Steady stream of cards for the low cost of a few life, sometimes no life. Um, we did occasion we do occasionally see Dark Confident decks with some incredibly expensive spells thrown in on a wing and a prayer. Ben, ben Rubin and Antonino De Rosa at Nationals one year had a deck that had Dark Confidant and I believe Greater Gargadon. Yeah, you see, there we are with the whole <laughs> 10 <laughs> mana notionally on Greater Gargadon, because that was a suspend creature. 48 Grand Prix top eights for Dark Confident. Repeatable extra cards going into your hand, sometimes at no cost. I wonder why it was so popular. <laughs> so uh, that's Dark Confident. Uh, let's move on um, to uh, what you refer to as the matter against antimatter uh, yeah. with the choice about in the Jundex, Kitchen Finks, or Jarouse Messenger, Kitchen Finks there. Well, it is very easy to cast because it's hybrid mana and it keeps coming back. Life gain. And development lowered the life gain from three to two. I feel I feel like there was also a change to make it go from two power to three power, if I remember right, having mm -hmm. to do with Revel Arc. See Blood Braid Elf there. Uh Yu Watanabe, by the way, currently agonizing over his opening hand, I can tell you. Uh, that uh, Blood Braid Elf has uh, done plenty for him. He has decided to keep. So let's get back to the table. We'll see uh, whether Sifka decides to keep his opening seven or not. Actually, I well, he's got no land. He has a Lotus Bloom. No Mulligan. No, so he that, that Mulligan's <coughs> yeah. away. Because uh, we we did we saw, we saw he kept he kept a two no Lotus line. Bloom, <laughs> no card, uh, no land hand in uh, one game during the Swiss and won the game easily on turn four. And then in game two he fought his way through a Jun Charm. So let's take another look at that Blood Braid Elf. We uh, we were slightly ignoring there because we were heading into uh, looking at what was happening with Sifka's uh, opening hand, not keeping seven. Um, but uh, Watanabe keeping his seven uh, for game three. There it is. Two Pro Tours within a year of its release. Uh, that was Simon Gertsen and then Kazuya Mitsumura. I've always, I've always felt like one of the reasons it took a little while for Jace the Mind Sculptor to really take off in standard mm -hmm. was the presence of Bloodbraid Elf. Because it just got you instantly to the point where you made Jace. Hate, but a haste it, creature, it possibly hit a Blightning, possibly mm -hmm. hit a Ram Gang, possibly... Okay, so that's Blood Braid Elf. Let's go for something a little more straightforward, a card that's been around for a bit of a while. The version you're looking at there is Magic 2011, M11, um, but I think it's fair to say a little bit earlier than 2011. Yeah, that, was my, that was my desktop wallpaper for a long time. It looks like uh, Sifka's going to keep okay. his opening hand. Let's get no to the ley action. line of sanctity action to start. Okay, to the floor. And Watanabe will begin with a land let's get there we are and he fetches up as he fans through checks his hand to see exactly what he wants to take it's a blood crypt so apart from playing good magic which is clearly important for Watanabe. He's now kind of at the point where he wants one malfunction in the next two, and then the pressure to tell. That's kind of the sort of overarching theme sure. of the next, uh, the next hour or so for him, if he can make it go that far. So there's a Ghost Quarter, there's a uh, Conjurer's Bobble, and a Lotus Bloom. Treetop Village on turn two for Watanabe. He has his Deathright Shaman uh, active now. Um, has the opportunity to get a mana out of it if he wants. 
but instead it's going to mm. turn sideways and actually have a power. And now he has a second one um, arriving. Uh, talking two, that is the counters left on Lotus Bloom. Uh, suspended initially at three. Elsewhere Flask, draw a card uh, from Sifka, uh, who has four cards in hand, one of which is Faith's Reward, Serum Visions, Ghost Quarter, and Misty Rainforest is the Czech player's hand right now. There you see Slaughter Games. Mm. Looming. Now, Watanabe doesn't have a third land, I believe. No, he does not. And there's only one land in a graveyard, so in fact, he cannot get to four mana to Slaughter Games. How many cards? Four, says Sefka. Abrupt Decay also there. Two uh, RTR cards together. Slaughter Games and Abrupt Decay. With Tarmogoyf shifting in and out very rapidly. And what an army just pulled back there for a moment. It looked like he was about to pick up his two Deathrite Charm and send them into the red zone. And then, oh, I'm just going to take my hands off there. Let's see what he does. <coughs> so, you knew what an army. Where'd he go? Liliana of the Veil, two of them. There's a Tarmogoyf, Abrupt Decay, Slaughter Games. And a, just a little gentle nudge uh, from the judge at the <laughs> you can table. Play Liliana, you can play Liliana and up Liliana, discard your second copy of Liliana pretty easily. Pretty happily, disrupt, yep. Disrupt uh, his hand. He's like, can you kill me? If I do this, am I dead? That's pretty mm. scary. saw that uh, it was possible on turn three for him to start going off without a Lotus Bloom. He came very close to doing it in game one. Oh so now we really are at Look. time to play. Mm -hmm. So Liliana comes out. That land has now That's gone it. from the graveyard. So he set himself back from Four mana. That's right. The yeah. fetch land will get up to four mana again next turn. Sure. But he will have to draw it. Sifka looking at Ghost Quarter, Serum Visions, Misty Rainforest, and Faith's Reward, remember. And something has to go. Whoa! Oh, <laughs> yeah. Again, you feel like the phrase time to make a play may not yeah. be far oh, away. No, he, goes, he goes with serum visions. All right. And then in we come. 18. With the other death right shaman. Sifka at 18 now. And the Lotus Bloom is supposed to take down there, buddy. Uh, yes, and that's not a may, I don't believe. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure what's a must and what's a may that's anymore. So again, you miss the trigger, you miss the trigger. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's the deal. So, yep. Even though you, it's, if, if you miss a trigger, and it's not detriment, I meant de not a detrimental trigger. Yep. Then uh, it just goes away. So, uh, Sifka just time walk. Long so. day. Long day. Yes. Yeah, and a long day. And I think what is good there though just stepped away from the game just for a few seconds, took a little sip of water. And that's not about the water in the hydration. That's about refocus, repurpose. Yeah, put a, put a, put a reminder on your deck. We talked about that earlier when uh, you yep. was doing that. Yep. And in fact, that little, that little reminder is on the table right now, just beside the trophy. You can just see it in one of our cameras are you just see it at the top of your screen there just that little square that he put on top of his deck right it's from his it keeps his dice cushion that's right he... yeah and 
Sefka is looking to the sky and is shaking his head. Let's go. And this is a French oh, it's not. What have I done? Discard, discard. Oh. It's the Sunday action again. It gets to you under the lights. I mean, also, it's three days of... I mean, again, Sefka's games have all gone... Even in the Swiss round, it's gone close to time. Yes, 40, for sure. 45 yeah. minutes to, to get through his match. Yep. Two. 16. In they come. I mean, Sifka is still at 16 as Tarmogoyf comes down. Yeah, and he was super quick. He was like, yeah, I know it's almost still your turn, <laughs> but I'm going to put that counter down to one on my Lotus Blue. Yeah, and there's a little, uh, a little sort of grimace from Sifka there, as if to say, "Yeah, this is the turn that stuff would be happening if I had yeah, so done what I was meant to." Oh. Uh, so to separate, no. stuff might be happening. Yeah. Anyway, but maybe not as optimally. Let's see what he comes up with as uh, he begins the process of thinning the library with those ghost quarters. He's going to attempt to go off here. Mm -hmm. I mean, Liliana is, is busily stripping his hand away turn after turn, so it, in a sense it's going to be hard for his hand to improve to the point where he's more comfortable uh, going for it. So, Kandra's bauble. Send back. Do you play a land? Draw. He's drawn. Did I play a land? You played the... No. I, I don't think so, because I had two quarters and I land. Yeah, yeah, correct. You did. Yeah, so once again, that question of how I laid land. Are you sure? Can I continue with land? Yes. They're happy that uh, he can continue with laying a land. He has Ghost Quarter reshape. Ghost Quarter does its thing again. Okay, little pause before going to get that island. So there's Lotus Bloom number one. Uh -huh. Number two sitting at the top of your screen we, with a miserable counter on it. We, we, we won't be seeing that one. No. Siska flasks away. Free white. Faith's reward and second sunrise is the hand. Here's second sunrise. <sighs> Off we go. So to be fair, that was a lot of land that just came back into play. <laughs> Triggers on the stack send the second sunrise back into the deck. To blue hole, and now he's starting to show his hand at the top of uh, the left hand side of his board position. For blue. Yeah. Uh, for, for blue. Yeah. For blue, what an RB again does the honors with the dice. And that's it, that's all the lands. So from here, he has to get the job done. 1-1, one, one. best of three now for the title. 40,000 US dollars to the winner here. <laughs> so there goes a Another persistent card draw. Yep, Chromatic for in our land, and now another land draw. I'll cast him. The sphere, I'll get to a lotus bloom. 
does have a face for one, right? Yes, he does. Yeah, that's just uh, at the very far left of his uh, cards Hands. right now, I believe. And there it is. Uh, two, two. Yeah, so one, one left. Oh, yeah. So one of each, a blue and a white manor. <coughs> 4,000 more lands appear in place. So triggers on the stack. So triggers on the stack, he says. Let's head off in search of more goodness. Bottom. Okay. On to the bottom it goes. <laughs> put that card face down. Okay. <laughs> He's counting his out. He has seven in his deck. He should have one more. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Okay. He's either enjoying himself tremendously or trying very hard to keep himself together. Could be a little of both. Uh, sure. <sighs> There's a the Searing Visions. Yeah, Searing Visions draws. I think that was Scrying. a really shape. Yep. <laughs> what an army he's looking. Yeah, oh, he's an interested spectator again here in game three. Perhaps all the more so after game one. Scrying. Scry away. It's a sleight of hand joining the hand, which is far left as you watch. Star goes away. And there's the grape shot. <laughs> Should I continue? And interesting that it is the grape shot. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. And what Anabi yeah. says, yes, okay, you win. And Stanislav Sivka leads by two to one here in the final of Pro Tour Return to Ravnica 2012. He is just one game away from so, the title. And for those of you who don't not familiar with Grape Shot, it's a sorcery with Storm, which means when you play it, you put a copy of that spell on the stack for every spell that's been played that turn, and Sifka can essentially play infinite spells by just continually casting, or near infinite spells, casting Second Sunrise and Faith's Reward over and over and over again, as well as all the Serum Visions and Sleight of Hands that he casts as well. Wow. So a, a, a miscue from Sifka. He forget he misses his trigger. He forgets to take a, to a mm -hmm. counter off. The turn it would have come into play, he just goes off anyway. Absolutely. That was turn three. <coughs> so now no more lives left for Yuya Watanabe. There you see my colors, my guild, my shirt. Proclaim your allegiance today by purchasing your guild t-shirt at mtgmerch.com. Well, those are the shirts uh, we were all wearing this weekend, right? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. I, yes, I expect here. to see very strong sales for the Simic. <laughs> well, I tell you what, you realize the final is, is it v. is it? Yes. So uh, the blue and the red uh, very well represented here, the top two. And to be fair, I mean, Sifka is playing a deck that is a kind of epic experiment. Yeah. Right? It's, he's, he's standing on the shoulders of some, of some scientists from Magic Past, um, and uh, he is finding Judge. the way to get it done. Judge. So uh, let's take Who's a look at a few more cards that uh, are available to you, Yawadanabi. About yeah. to K. We saw that in here. He brought yeah, that in, you know, maybe trying to disrupt the combo somewhere along the way. Um, prevent him from being able to do stuff the way he exactly wanted to do it. Uncounterable uh, removal spell, sort of, you know, the, a smother class effect. Mm -hmm. And uh, very interesting, that bottom thing, that the idea that magic is built for so many different formats and there are cards in any given set, you think, I'm not sure this is quite for me, and it may not be for you in your 
you know, your Golgari draft deck. Well, let's face it, that's completely fine, their Golgari draft deck. But for Legacy, that's where they, they wanted it to sit. As you a, know what? I, I, I found that there's counters for all of these uncounterable spells. I don't believe you. Yeah, of course there are. Okay, Supreme Verdict, Wrath of God, can't be countered. Um, I can use Rootborn Defenses. In fact, go up a guy. Ah, uh, okay. That's that's fair. That that that's pretty good. Abrupt decay. Uh, abrupt decay is absolute. Uh, is Apostle's blessing. We've seen it actually happen at this tournament. Oh, so you're you're gonna just give protection for just a colorless uh -huh. mana and two life. Okay, so that's the oh God, that's that. Yeah. Um. Well, we know slaughter games. Else? So yeah, so slaughter games. How do I counter that? It's not really a counter, but I'm, what I'd love to see at one uh -huh. point is someone play runic repetition. <laughs> <laughs> so they get slaughter okay. games, and then they runic repetition their their spell back. Okay, you're doing well at the moment. I'm going to come <laughs> back to this. I'm, I'm sure I can beat you somehow. Let's move on to another card. Uh, let's take a look at the lovely Liliana of the Veil, the mythic rare planeswalker from Innistrad, of lovely. course. Do you mean that sarcastically when you say lovely? She's done some terrible things. Terrible things. Oh, sure. Okay. I suppose I wouldn't invite her home to meet mother. But repeatable way to deal with hexproof creatures and strip cards from players' hands. 17 Grand Prix top eights first year. So uh, the ultimate ability representing the cruel choice that Liana gave Talia that uh, opened the Hell Vault. It was unclear, actually, last night as people were talking, R&D peoples were talking, uh -huh. what, which came first. Did, did the mechanic influence the story, or did the story influence the mechanic? And there were people sort of bickering yeah. back and forth oh, on okay. both sides of it. It was very interesting. I, I was very surprised, actually, at the choice that Thalia made. It's like, so here's the thing, because, you know, they've kind of fought each other to a standstill. And you can sort of picture this huge sort of courtyard by the Hell Vault. Um, and, and Liliana basically says The lobby Thalia, of the Hell Vault. Essentially, either you, Thalia... And your troops can die, or you can open the Hell Vault. And Thalia thinks about it and goes, that are open the Hell Vault then. <laughs> and, you know, I, I accept that there's a gamble, because maybe, you know, there's not an awful lot in there. I think they, they might have found Skull Clamp inside. <laughs> um, but you never quite know what's in the Hell Vault. But she, that's where she went. She went, I'm going to open the Hell Vault. And, of course, what came out of the Hell Vault? Grizzlebrand came out of the Hell Vault in the end. So... I'm not sure that was a fair exchange in the end. A few soldiers and Thalia for Grizzlebrand being unleashed upon the plain of Innistrad. But that's Liliana of the Vale, and uh, Grizzlebrand would certainly like to do some uh, skull battering, and here is Batter Skull, this time from New Phyrexia, Mythic Rare once again, the living weapon. Yeah, it says an effective 4-4 Vigilant Lifelink, and I, I think that's a, a fairly understated use of the word effective. It's turned out to be uh, a, a terrific card. Sure, and 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 was the the tipping point for the banning of uh, Stoneforge Mystic in Standard and Modern. Mm, like, sure. uh, you can't just go get a four four, and that's like almost impossible to deal with. Yeah, and it's that final ability you see just before the equip three return Batter Skull to its owner's hand. That's kind of what made it so difficult because as soon as you got to untap with it again, you could kill the creature. You could, you know, yeah. basically it was just, well, I'm going to respond. Three, back to hand, make another 4-4. Four, four. <laughs> Luckily, Vigilant, just a, yeah. a tremendous card. No surprise that we've seen it here uh, this weekend. Uh, and next we turn to Slaughter Games, I do believe. Yeah, this was one of the cards we were just talking about. This is... Uh uh, playtest teams included Surgery Carnival. Surgery Carnival. Yeah. Uh, brain amputation. It, it, is, it is a truly, truly horrible picture. Beautifully done, but that is not a view anyone oh. ever wants. Yeah, no. Did no. you think that, that was just some kind of I, red actually, and purple pretty little something? Yeah, I did. I actually did. Yeah. yeah. Take a look. Yeah. Not... Just not not what you ever want to see. Not not good at all. But, uh, potent against blue green scape shift decks. It's, uh, players, by the way, are looking at their opening hands, and we are go. So let's We're get underway down. with a leyline of sanctity. Wow! Get down to the floor, boys and girls. Leyline of sanctity is coming into play before the game starts. And then, you know, looking at the... So that is Sifka's uh, hand there. Trying to see what the hand was that uh, 
uh, Watanabe kept. You know, I, I, you know, did he keep a hand with Thoughtseize or Inquisition of Kozilek? And then what happens? You know, yeah, down. How, how bad does his hand become? With the ley line, sure. You know, does he suddenly go, oh, I didn't know I mulliganed to four? Well, he needs to have not mulliganed to four because this is the game he must win to force game five. Sifka's hand One. looks pretty presentable. We'll talk you through that uh, in a moment. Not currently looking at that, but uh, cracks his misty rainforest, turns that into an island. And is this the game where Stanislav Sifka, having gone 15-0, and only lost in the last round of Swiss when it couldn't possibly matter for him not only being in the top eight but being the top seed, is this the game where he becomes a Pro Tour champion? The age of 24. Has he lost 10 games this weekend? Mm, something around that mark, yeah. He was 30-2, and 30-4. and four. <laughs> so we've uh, serum visioning here. Yep, he has not lost 10 games this weekend. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, it didn't feel that way. <laughs> so Sefka has Pyrite Spellbomb in hand. He <laughs> has Faith's uh, Reward in hand. He has a second Sunrise. He has Sleight of Hand, Elsewhere Flask, and an Island. Well, what he really needs to find here is a reshape and uh, Good. start turning that on. Wadanabi will pass the turn. Seven games so far this weekend Sifka has lost. Crazy. Slice of hand. Let's see what I've got. Kundra's Bauble and Elsewhere Flask. Here's what I find on top of the deck. Cast Seer of Visions, draw. He will see certainly a chromatic star in the top two. He re examines his hand and again. There you see it. So we do see a double mulligan in uh, Watanabe's hand. I see a slaughter games and an and uh, thought sees. Mm. He has no way to deal with that ley line. Yeah, it's there It's there for possibly the rest of this Pro Tour. Yeah. Pass the turn. End of turn. What an be at 16. Is it's so difficult to see what an be racing. It's like, where is he headed in terms of getting pressure onto the board? Oh, well, I mean, he's close to being uh, putting a Bloodbraid Elf into play. Sure. I mean, he can do that on his next turn. Yeah, and that'll put Sifka to, you know, 15. I guess if he does blood braid and then blood braid two turns in a row with some fun stuff coming off, sure, some timer that goes. that gets interesting fast. Going to uh, remove a lamb because, of course, he does get to attack the graveyard. He's not targeting Sifka. Here is blood braid. Let's see where it does go. Dark confident, not the worst. Fourteen. In comes blood braid. So now we see Sifka, 14. What does he do with his two mana? Answer, he says elsewhere flask. Draws, he drew ghost quarter. That is the land for the turn. <laughs> you heard it here first. Ghost quarter comes down. Conjurer's bauble. And pass the turn. Okay, it is getting interesting in tight because now there's stuff going on. The 13 does not really matter. Uh, right now, Watanabe takes three from Liliana of the Vale. He draws. Looks like he's drawn Treetop Village. Okay. Which, again, not great right now, but uh, following turn could be uh, interesting news. 
Liliana's uh, discard effect, by the way, is not targeted. So sure, because it's each each player. Yeah. I think yes. So Sifka keeping hydrated. I feel like these guys are working an old time radio. <laughs> The Foley editors. <laughs> They're not actually flicking their cards. We're doing it in the booth right <laughs> up by our microphones, by our mouths. So, Ancient Grudge. Point, click, on. Interesting. Yeah. Flask is gone. Watanabe trying to keep things tight. He's 2-1 down. He's going to flash back the ancient grudge. I'll just draw a card. Yeah. In for five. Sifka to nine. Nine? Didn't play the treetop village. No reshape. No. Two islands, a chromatic star, two faiths rewards, second sunrise, and the kill mechanism for this game, pirate spell, pirate spell bomb. This will be masterful if Wadanabe pulls this match out. He is not supposed to win this match. Sifka had a turn zero ley line. He just didn't have a hand that had all the pieces he needed. He had, he had to play his pieces sure. out early. Mm -hmm. uh, once to store his artifacts on the board. And uh, Watanabe was able to kill them also and make it more difficult for him to even Red. start experimenting. Red, he says. Interesting. Okay. okay. He's drawn in to a conjurer's bauble. Red from the East Colorize. Oh, okay. Straight up casts Pyrite Spell Bomb, then aims it at Deathrite Shaman. So there'll be a response from Wadanabe. Seven. And that two life will send Stanislav Sifka down to seven. Pass the turn. There's five already on the board. Watanabe mm -hmm. takes none from Dark Confident. Then draws for the turn. It's not the players' championship, so he didn't draw Blood Braid Elf right there like he did <laughs> against Shota Yasuoka. This is getting super tight now. Wadanabe sends for five. Stanislav Sivka at two. He would be dead if the pirate, if the death rate shaman was still alive. Uh huh. Liliana, discard. Not a problem for Watanabe, to be fair. <coughs> and Sifka is going to just put his hands down, hand it down rather, and think about this for a minute. Because he doesn't want to be in game five. He's going to discard an island. What an RB lays treetop village. This is the last turn of this game for Stanislav Sifka, one way or the other. He's drawn Lotus Bloom. He's got Faith's Reward, Faith's Reward, Second Sunrise, and Lotus Bloom. Those are his four cards. I don't think he can do this. It has been a week end of game fives here on Pro Tour Sunday. And I, I, th I think we are heading to one here. Wow. So, blue. Sacrifice. I mean, obviously, Sifkin does whatever he can here, and let's of see course. how that goes. There's no reason not to try. Amazing how many people don't understand that, by the way. <laughs> I know how obvious that sounds, but, well. So 
so he begins what he hopes will be a Pro Tour winning pile for this turn. Cycle. Cycle into Grape Shot. That won't do it because he has the Treetop Village, which is going to activate and kill him. Kill those guys and yes. hope for the best. Yep. And Sifka Even if is. He could. Sure. Sifka looking at this just to make sure. So he says, here's second sunrise, a uh, face reward rather. Back comes the bauble. At 15-0, we thought it was clearly his weekend. Then Kelvin Chu shows that it can be beaten, this deck, by just monstering past it with Infect. <laughs> that put Chu into the top eight, and we thought, was this going to be a flame out and, and burn in glory? A Swiss story that ended in an unfortunate quarterfinal matchup, and we'd say, well done, Stanislav Sefti, your first Pro Tour top eight. He came back, he got through the quarters, he got through the semis. We were prepared for a victory here in the final. Might still happen, but what an Arby's making him work mighty hard for it. Wow. It's going to go to game five, boys and girls. And an ancient grudge really was a big part of that. Absolutely. <laughs> no reshape. <laughs> no reshape. <laughs> so, so if you're absolutely right. He'll be needing one in game five. He'll be on the play in game five. <laughs> Long day. Long day. <sighs> One to go. Two two. One game. Trophy. Fame. Glory. Forty thousand US dollars. Six extra pro points. A seat in the players' championship. Yeah. yeah. Well, actually, they both have a seat in the players' championship already. Uh, since you just qualified for it by virtue of being the player of the year, wouldn't it pass down to the runner-up from that Pro Tour? I do not know how the pass-down rules work, but I can tell you that if you are looking to face a greater challenge, why not take your game to a Grand Prix and see how you fare against the best players in your region, as well as top visiting Magic Pros. Upcoming Grand Prix include Philadelphia, Lyon, Auckland, Chicago, Bochum, and Charleston. For more information, visit wizards.com forward slash Grand Prix. I believe it goes to an uh, at-large slot, it turns out. Oh, uh, just okay. Just <coughs> confirming that with uh, Scott Larry. So that'll leave more room for players doing well on the players' uh, circuit over the year. So there you see Ancient Grudge. <laughs> that is why we're going to game five and people sometimes say oh all your super powerful cards they're all rare they're all mythic i can't find them all no common ancient grudge gets you to game five of the pro tour just, just a, a terrific card well i mean he also still had to draw the reshape but i think it, it, it yeah. cut him out of having an it, extra draw or two it made a big big deal more played in modern than any individual artifact fair enough wow and uh, an homage to Ray of Revelation. I didn't know that. The artifact version of Kill Enchantments sure. for two and then flash that back. Fine. Clever. Turns out they're actually quite good at making magic. <laughs> those those are in D types. Well, well Time Spiral had a lot of homages. Yes, of course. Incidentally, um, if you haven't had a chance to check them out, I believe the inside R&D videos uh, for Return to Ravnica are now up and available, certainly via the website. You can take a look uh, at those. Lots of uh, fun stuff from inside the world of R&D as they explain how some of the key cards from Return to Ravnica uh, came to be. Uh, so Ancient Grudge there. Something else that uh, uh, Yuya Watanabe has had plenty of play from this weekend. Let's take a look at our, our next card uh, on the slide. Olivia Voldaren, she is such a beating. You know, initially you look at her and, and you think, fantastic, thanks for my limited bomb. That's right. lovely. Look forward to playing that in sealed deck and, you know, slamming her if I like black, red in draft. She does a lot more than just limited play. Right. It was it was a big deal. Uh, this was a big card for you at the Players' Championship. It really was. Uh, we've, seen, uh, we've seen this in Hall of Famer Patrick Chapin brought a... 
uh, deck to, I believe it was Worlds, a Grixis deck that had Olivia Voldaren in San Francisco. Uh, so we've seen it show up. It's mm -hmm. uh, often relegated to sideboards in modern, but I mean, if it's showing up here, you know that it's probably getting overlooked somewhat somewhere in standard. Yeah, fair. And they're designed top down, meaning that they start off with, hey, how about Dracula? What, That'd what be would cool. It, right. What would a super powered uh, aristocratic vampire look like in our game? Uh, and How um, would we represent that mechanically based on this idea? And there it is with Olivia. So, Stanislav Sivka, both players, by the way, decided to sort of just have a little bit of uh, me time uh, <laughs> there as they gear up for a deciding game. You have to feel that the pressure here is on Sivka because Watanabe knows that there are certain things that can't be beaten, in a sense. He, he is, on, on a hiding to nothing, he can sit there and say, you start with ley line, you bang out your couple of Lotus Blooms early, you just get there, and I kind of shrug it, and go... If anything, it makes it easier for Watanabe. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, it's easier for Watanabe. The pressure is on Sifka because he has to make the right moves to make the win that, in theory, sits there for him happen. Watanabe has this kind of, well, if you got it, you got it. Meanwhile, I'll just do everything I can to pile the pressure on. He got that game one win. He got the game four win. <laughs> wow. Right, both times he was able to just have enough pressure on that Sifka had to go off exactly when he tried to do it. Or he was, you know, going to just lose to, to the Tarmogoyfs and the Blood Braids and the Dark Confidants and the Death Rite Shamans. Good luck. Thanks. Good luck. Yep. And to you. Yuya Watanabe has won three titles in 2012. Grand Prix Kuala Lumpur, Grand Prix Manila, the Players' Championship right here in Seattle. He is one game away from claiming his first Pro Tour title at the second attempt. Stanislav Sivka is 17-1 and one on the weekend. And now he plays one game for a Pro Tour title. There are two Lotus Blooms. Elsewhere, Flask, Serum Visions, Ley Line of Sanctity in there. He's not drawn a land. He's got a no land hand with double Lotus Bloom. Elsewhere, Flask, Serum Visions, it. he's going to go for it. Double Suspend, Lotus Bloom. A no Bloom. land hand. No land for the final game. In the game five game. Oh. on the play of the Pro Tour. Amazing. Deathrite Shaman remembered to put them both to two. Yeah, don't forget those in game five. He draws Chromatic Sphere. He's going to pass the turn. You, you knows there's no land in hand. He draws Inquisition of Kozilek. We see a couple of uh, blanks now. Land number two for Watanabe. Two slaughter games and uh, three blanks and an Inquisition. <sighs> and a Thought sees four blanks. Oh, boy. But he does have Ancient Grudge. Ten people at or near this final table. Two of them probably feeling very lonely right now. So no die on top of uh, Sifka's deck. To remind him about the, the Lotus Blooms? Right. Okay. Is Yuya taking a little bit of time here? This is maybe... Oh, just a, Maybe just putting a, a man, we talked about putting a few extra rhythm. seconds. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, the cards he's looking at are, are dead cards. To be fair, if you look from top down, Sifka has to reach past his Lotus Blooms to get sure. to his deck. So it's quite a reach. <laughs> yep. But then, one time in a hundred. Why not? He checks the ley line. He knows what it does. 
actually my four dead cards. Oh. Do I thought sees myself? Mm -hmm. He is. Okay. So, now, is that so that he shows Sifka the ancient grudge? Not sure. Okay. I want you to see that I have he this. Wants to have, so he wants to have fuel for the shaman? Just things. Yeah, that's... Okay. There's the first land. The Lotus Blooms are down to one. Serum Visions. Scry. Scry 2. It's a Lotus Bloom and a Conjurer's Bauble. Faith's reward is in hand, as we already know. There's a chromatic elsewhere flask, reshape, a second elsewhere flask, and a chromatic sphere. The five cards in Sifka's hand that he will be hoping will be the start of a historic turn that will give him a Pro Tour title. Oh. Pass the turn. What an be cracks his land. Hats off to you, you win or lose. He's given us a tremendous final. No doubt who players won't want to face anytime soon. What an RB is back and how. 2007 Rookie of the Year, 2009 and 2012 Player of the Year. It says each opponent uh, exile target card. It says exile target card in the graveyard. Okay. Each nice. opponent. Loses, loses to life, not targeted okay. on either end of that. Mm -hmm. Looks like Tarmogoyf has uh, entered Watanabe's hand. It also looks like he's had to pass the turn. So, Lotus Bloom. Okay. Is that okay? This one. <laughs> this one, something else. Might have a discussion point, he says. Essence. Why don't I'll be flicks through five cards in hand. There are five cards in Sifka's hand. We know them. Double Elsewhere Flask. Re Reshape. Chromatic Sphere. Faith's Reward. Three white. So, three white. Now the other one appears. Draw step? Draw step. Is that okay? That's priority. So pass priority, and what now is going to be okay with that. So yep. the Ancient Grudge stays in the graveyard with green mana up. So the flashback mana is up. The draw happens, but now we're still in Sifka's. And <laughs> looks like what is going to go okay. Into your main phase you go. Because that three white wasn't of use to Sifka right then. Please go squatter. Basically has three extra draws to get his engine going. Two, I see two elsewhere flasks. Mm -hmm. You do. Two elsewhere, reshape, chromatic sphere, faith's reward. Map it all out at home. Blue. Okay. That's true. So, ghost quarter. Kills off an island. And again, because of that ancient grudge in the graveyard, Sifka allowing Watanabe the chance to respond all the way through this process. Well, that'll be fast. Ghost called an island for an island. Lotus Bloom has unsuspended, so it is now ready to generate three mana of any color Sifka requires. Clue white. Here's the thing he's not under tremendous pressure. Sure. From. I mean, that's the question. If, if you do, if you just go, I'm fine, thanks. The tr the thing is, he loses that second Lotus Bloom, 
Certainly. Doesn't he? You know, at the end of this turn, if he passes, he's back to just having an island in play. That, that's his awkwardness. You're right, he's not under pressure. Four cards. Right? Yes. <laughs> I did, yeah. Yes. Yeah, 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 I think so. I think so. We all think so. You did. Played the ghost quarter. Uh huh. So he. Blue. Interesting. That made me reshape for a second. He drew another reshape. White. Three white. Three white, of course. Faith's reward, mana pool empty. Not for long. There's two Lotus Blooms back. Still two Elsewhere Flask and two Reshape in hand. Elsewhere Flask. He's drawn a Lotus Bloom. <coughs> Casts it, suspend, and passes the turn. three cards in hand. So, now although the turn has been passed, we're still in Sifka's turn because Watanabe has a decision to make. It's the reason he's not picked up his hand or moved a muscle because he has an ancient grudge in the graveyard and he can, of course, at end of turn, kill a thing. And the question is, A, do I? And B, if I do, what? doesn't really feel like killing a Lotus Bloom is particularly profitable anymore. Well... I don't know. What do you think? It goes away. You know, I mean, yeah. it's not going to come back. It's one more card not in the cycle. Yep. Let's get rid of the Chromatic Star. Mm, uh, sphere. Yep. Sphere, yeah. So now what an RB untaps. Huh. I'll draw another dead card. It's a thought seize. One. In. 17. 17 Sifka now. Cards. And there's Tarmogoyf. Four cards, what an RB. So we go back to Sifka. He has plenty of mana because he's got two uh, Lotus Blooms ready to rock and roll. Lays Flask. Draws. I believe he's drawn Lotus Bloom. Oh, a Hallowed Fountain uh, in hand now with the two reshapes and Lotus Bloom. So that's the four card hand for Sifka. Lays the Hallowed Fountain, passes back. Tarmogoyf, you're uh, helpfully telling us, is currently a 3-4. Again, he stumbles in the sense that he's drawn another card he can't cast. It's Kitchen Finks. Although, does he have it? No, even the uh, Deathrite Shaman can't help him at the moment for that third mana. Yeah. So he will probably just send in four power of red zone action. All the dead cards that the, the ley line of sanctity is blanked. Oh. All the Jun players were, were dreading this card. Of course. You know, their catch all removal spell was really abrupt decay. Mm hmm. So, what did I be again? Just checks the number of cards in hand for Sifka. sees himself. Well, Inquis yeah, Inquisition of Kozilek. I'm sorry, yeah. Um, so that puts uh, Kitchen Finks yeah. into the graveyard. So, again, thinking of every conceivable Sorry. way that the cards that are useless can be made useful. Terrific. Whatever happens. Did he just forget a... No, he put the counter down okay. at the top. Yeah, it was. Da it's down to one. Watanabe keeps the death right shaman back because now he has uh, more more th good things to do than attack for one. He can functionally attack for two. End of turn. Death right shaman. Get rid of my own Inquisition of Kozilek, which has already gained me a point on my Tarmogoyf. I'm going to put you to 11. 
Wouldn't you exile his faith to reward? Seven. Tarmogoyf comes in. Sifka's at seven. Here's another Deathrite Shaman. Sifka has a turn. He's drawn Chromatic Star. Chromatic Star, two reshapes, second Sunrise in hand. And Lotus Bloom. He can draw a fair amount of cards this turn. He may need to draw an unfair amount of cards this turn. <laughs> very, very well done. Because this is it. This is your Pro Tour, Return to Ravnica, right here on that table, on your screens right now, boys and girls. Around the world, thanks for watching. Especially if you're in the middle of the night somewhere. Thanks for sticking with us. Right through to the final turns. Some fizzled twice in one game in game one. Mm -hmm. So here we go. There's two Deathright Shaman on board. There's a 4 5 Tarmogoy. Can you count Storm, please? Storm, can you count? Please? Can you count you can Storm, us. please? Storm, storm, storm count is two. Can storm count is two. Lotus yeah, Bloom. Sorry. But it's your responsibility to count Storm. Yeah, yeah, yeah thanks. <laughs> Yeah. Thanks for nothing, Judge. Yeah. Will you count? <laughs> well, actually, kind of, no, I won't, because it's your cards. Your game. Your Pro Tour? We're going to find out very soon. Lotus Bloom goes away. Hmm. X is one. X is one. We Go shape. get a Conjurer's Bobble. Unless he wants to just set up and get a. Yeah. Every decision so vital. Certainly, Bauble is what's heading into play, onto the battlefield. It comes. A battlefield of creatures against extraordinary guile and deception and trickery and moving parts. Piloted by an exceptional player. Draw a card. Nothing. I'm just going to straight up draw a card. What I'm going to draw is Ghost Quarter. Did I play a land? Don't believe you did this. No. Thank you. Thank you. Blue. Blue. There's Ghost Quarter. Get rid of the island. Go get an island. There's still some left. Thin that deck by just that nice little percent. Again. So I hear one of the judges saying uh, they've got plenty of six-sided dice. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Obviously, talking about his storm count. Yeah. That's an island that's gone into hand. We're going to have another reshape. That'll be our fourth spell for the turn. Yeah, and you can see near the left of your screen assorted six-sided dice. Storm count at four, which Watanabe is now, in fact, helping out with. Well, that's good. Yeah, we do actually see the grape shop going by there. I was just curious, just in case. It's like, would you do the storm count? As he goes <laughs> and finds his pyrite spell bomb for game five. But, uh, chromatic star. Sifka playing this game for a spot at next year's Players' Championship. Three blue. Three blue. One white. One white. Where we go. Draw a card. That was a chromatic sphere that went into hand. That one there. Down it comes. Storm count five. 
that was the second want. sunrise. Yes. That one there. It could have been the other one. Yes. It wasn't. <laughs> Just so you know. He's like, okay, all this. Do you want to eat my ghost quarter? The opportunity he's giving him. Or do you want to get my second sunrise? So, what an he just reaches out, just checks everything that's sitting there in the graveyard. 13 cards poised to come back into play. It's quite a lot. And still, Watanabe looks to see, can, is there something? Something I can do extraordinary. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so. And at that point, Sifka's prepared to turn his hand over. Triggers. Oh. Again. Triggers. You see from the flasks. Four cheap artifacts on the right next to the all-star ley line of Sanctity that blanked so much of Watanabe's opening hand. Yes. To the point where he had a thought sees himself. Mm -hmm. And then Inquisition himself to put a counter on his own Tarmogoyf. All sorts of convolutions. Which is probably not a word. I dropped it. How many more times will Watanabe have to shuffle Sifka's deck? How many more will it take? Storm count at six. The draw was Kundra's bauble. The second draw, sleight of hand. So there's going to be spells seven and eight right there. Cycle. Cycle into Cycle. a land. Cycle the next sphere into... Cycle. A card that's kind of already done its job. Uh-oh. Uh, uh, and, and another card that's already done its job. Serum Visions. And cast the Serum Visions. Storm Count goes on to dice number two that Watanabe is currently in charge of. Is he counting up to his own demise at the last? Scry two. I will play Conjurer's Bauble. Draw. I will send it away and draw. What I will draw is Chromatic Sphere. I will play it. Draw. Draw. That is a Faith's Reward. We're at is the resistance about to spells. Is the resistance about to break, Brian? I mean, five more spells. I mean, he, just has, he can cast five spells in his hand. He just has to find the Grape Shot. Yep. Watanabe's at 15. Storm count at 11. Storm count at 12. Tick, 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 tick. Six white. Very shortly, boom. Islands. Six white. Going to make everything islands. Second sunrise. 13, the storm count. Die number three. And it's about to be die number three for you, your Watanabe, yes. here in game five. I think. I mean, look at how many. Every yes. one of those represents a card draw. Yeah. Let's try. Sifka has a rictus grin on his face that is part agony, part disbelief, part wonder. Rictus, he's going to kill him. <laughs> Sifka now Free with far. what's like half his deck there. None of those are grape shot. He sticks that into what is his hand, remember, over on that far Draw. side. Draw. Draw. Watanabe is waiting to see the grape Draw. shot that will end things. Draw. 
draw. Draw. Sifka really is going through the motions. <coughs> And Storm Count goes to 14. That is a great shot. 15? 15. You're at 15. He confirms. Wadanabi just nods impassively. Storm Count is at 15. Great shot. 16. Gain two. <laughs> so we have to go through this all over again. <laughs> okay. <Yep>. One. 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 <laughs> he could have just get one more spell. Yes, that's right. And that's why Watanabe keeps on going. What a pro. <laughs> What an Arby's at one. White. White. Three white. Three white. Three white. Three more white. <laughs> Any more dice anywhere? <laughs> There's the handshake. <laughs> there you go, Stanislav Sifka is the Pro Tour champion. Returned around Nigga 2012. Three words. Eggs. Basket. One. Uh, just phenomenal. I mean, he, he tore through the tournament, won his first 15 rounds. Lost in the 16th round going for history, and then won three more rounds to make the kind of history every Magic player dreams of making. Winning a Pro Tour. Just incredible. Stanislav Sivka, your Pro Tour return to Ravnica champion. He played them into the dust this weekend. Oh, goodness gracious me. You see him there. Scott Larrabee will be on the way. Oh, <laughs> yeah. He can't believe it's happened. He really can't. Let's take you down to the floor. Scott Larrabee. Congratulations to the Pro Tour return to Ravnica champion, Stanislaw Sifka of the Czech Republic. Out. Standing. Gets the trophy. Thank you. <laughs> Raises it a lot. Once again, winning forty thousand dollars from the Czech Republic, Stanislav Sitka. <laughs> Kisses the cup. I'd like to thank, thank all the players, judges, and staff for making it a great event. Tune in again February 15 to 17, 2003, for the live webcast of Pro Tour Gate Crash from Montreal, Canada. Thank you and good night. Stanislav Sivka, never in doubt. Not for me. Turn up in round one, just destroyed everyone. Apart from Kelvin Chu. Kelvin Chu's got a feel Kelvin Chu's like, I beat him. I'm the answer to the trivia <laughs> question. I beat Sivka. Fantastic weekend, fantastic performance. Can't argue with that at all. No, not at all. Congratulations, Stanislav. That was uh, amazing to watch. Thanks for joining us all day. Let's send you back to the news desk. You're going to get an interview probably with Sivka. So it's time for Marshall and the guys.